What's up guys and welcome back to Let's Play Demon Souls Kita's Epic Boss Smackdown Edition. Oh we're gonna go crank it down on some bosses. First things first though. Like I said, I went ahead and grinded some Greystone Chunks. I'm also playing online this time, as you can see all the messages. So when we go to Old Monk, we have a chance of facing a PvP battle. But first, we're going to the Smithing Tunnels. So I can go ahead and uh, upgrade my Longsword Crushing Style to get it a little bit better. And then I'm going to buy some more Hearthstone to upgrade my bow. And get some bow stuff and... Wait a second. Oh. I was like, what was that hanging basket thing? No! <laughs> I thought I might get hurt real bad doing that. What do I need? I'll tell you what I need. To upgrade my crushing longsword. Okay, so check this out. Right now, it's 112 and a bonus of 91 with that B strength attribute. 112.91. Now, 120, 138, son! Holy crap, that difference. Holy crap. Alright, so, uh, we did that. I'm also going to go ahead and upgrade my compound short bow. Uh, keep on leveling that up so I can uh, do a little more damage with that. And do I have everything I need for this one? I have that, 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 yep. And, okay, that's that's good enough, I guess. That'll help at least a little bit with Maiden Astraya. And the later on, the Blue Dragon, more importantly. So, cool. Let's go ahead and uh, go fight us some bosses. I guess I'll start with the Old Monk, and if I beat him, I might revert back to offline play just again, so I don't screw up my World Tendency. Right now, it's all pure white. I don't. I thought it like switched to like a surfer average sort of thing. So I'm not exactly sure how or when that takes place or how it's handled in the remake. Because I was only ever, ever able to play offline in the original version for Razones. And that being, I couldn't connect my PS3 uh, online. Uh, yeah, we already read this. We already read that description, so... Let's head to the... Old, old, old monk. Hmm. Bloodstain here. Oh, I guess they must have died to the man-eater there. Oh. Oh my. <laughs> oh. Oh my. They got picked up and tossed down. Okay. Cutscene. 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 Should be coming up soon here. Oh my god. This crushing longsword. Woo. It's strong. I'm pretty sure the cutscene's supposed to happen. I thought it was like right when you walked in here. Uh, I hope me playing offline didn't mess with that. No. Bad. Uh, I've been summoned a couple times in to fight people here. And every single time... Um, every single time... They all die from these guys before they even get to me. Oh, right. Yo, you. Okay, if for some reason the cutscene didn't activate, I will go ahead and activate it myself. I swear to God. I swear to God. I get summoned in, and then I just wait there for a while, and they die. So, I don't know. Ooh, it's like a yellow fog gate. Wait. I'm not allowed to go in. You're undefeated. Like, am I supposed to be waiting right now for someone, someone to get summoned or something? I've never seen the, the fog gate this color before. Oh my. Oh my. I have a lot of bosses to beat this episode, so hopefully this doesn't take too long. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Alright. What is with it? What if I run down the tower and run back up? It's never happened in offline play, man. Okay, let's try that. Examine corpse. Ooh, what goodies you got? Mercury stone, just what I was looking for, as a matter of fact. Oh. Here we go. All right, we got a PvP match game summoned in. I'm guessing that's what we were waiting on here. Uh, old Monk, this is, we've seen him, the guy, who the usurper who came and killed the queen. Thanks to his demonic golden robes that you see in front of you. 
uh, summoning a Black Phantom to do his will. However, at this point, we got, I don't know if we got lucky or unlucky, but at this point, he's like so, uh, he's so far gone, he's like his soul, so soul starved at this point that the Golden Robe just abandons him and lets him fall like to his death and instead absorbs a new victim which is going to be the Black Phantom that is taking over and taking control of it and bringing to madness. Uh, the King in Yellow, by the way, is a... I don't know if it's a Lovecraft. It's a very Lovecraft, like Lovecraftian horror that this is inspired by. Another inspiration that I missed talking about was the Beating Heart. Uh, it's from Berserk. The Kushan Warriors do that to create demons of their own in Berserk. So, very Berserkian. Okay. Okay, okay, this is the first time I've ever done a PvP match for this boss fight, so this could go horribly for me. We shall see. Wait a second, this looks like the normal old monk boss fight. This looks like the normal old monk boss fight. Alright, that was no PvP at all, man. Uh, yeah, normally it's a little bit tougher than that, but I think my crushing sword just absolutely obliterated it. <laughs> uh, good, good, good boss battle, guys. Good boss battle, right? I apologize. I was trying to do PvP. I tried, okay? I tried. You saw me. I'm online. I am online. Beware, beginners have had. Uh, got his golden demon soul. Uh, in order to get his actual headgear, you have to be summoned. Throne Room of Yormadar, Archstone of the Old Monk Demon. His revenge complete, the old man withered away, driven to madness by the golden robes that controlled his body. Now too frail to serve as a vessel, he was fully absorbed by the demon's soul. Which is what we witnessed happening. The Throne Room of Yormadar part, that Yormadar, and I'm gonna actually quit out and go back in to turn the game offline again so I don't screw with my world tendency. Sorry. Let's just see if it's all good still. It is all good still. Okay. Um, and I'll keep on talking about Yormadar as I do that. Uh, so, uh, Yormadar is essentially either a school or a line, um, a lineage. Probably more likely as a lineage. It kind of just depends on the translation that you look at. Or it could be a school that was started by Yormadar. Or, but, or it could be both. I don't know. You take your pick. Um, but... Basically, those of the Yormadar line or lineage or who go to the school learn magic and sorcery and spells. That is what is important for that line. That's why the royalty class does that. And that's why it's interesting that that throne room is called the throne room of Yormadar. So at least the questions that I talked about in my, about in my lore video. Is Yormadar the name of the queen's line, which is why it's the throne room of Yormadar? And that's why like all the royalty are Yormadar line. And it could also be like any nobility really is could be considered the Yormadar like a Yormadar class. Although it's called Latria, so I don't I don't know. Maybe that's just the noble line. Or it could be uh that the old monk was Yormadar because he was hanging out there and residing there when that happened. That's another possibility. Another possibility. Alright, let's seek soul power. Let's see what happens if I go strength now. Now it's gonna go up by two. Um I might do endurance though. I think I'm gonna do endurance. Yeah. So I can keep on like eventually, hopefully, being able to equip all of this without my clean ring. Although like, I need ring of great strength. Although I think I probably need a couple, few more levels into it to be able to do that. But that way I can equip some other rings and still wear this baller armor. Uh, okay. So anyways, that was boss number one for this epic boss time. <laughs> Epic boss edition, Kita. Ah! <laughs> Ooh. Rough death, Kita. Rough death. Uh, yeah, so it could be that the old monk's name was Yormadar, and he was involved in the creation of the Yormadar school, and maybe the queen kicked him out, the guy who started all the Yormadar stuff in school of thought and everything. Uh, perhaps because he was getting too demonic in his thoughts and all that, and tempted by power. So in her wisdom, she kicked him out. And he was like, screw you, queen, and he came back and murdered her. Uh, that could be another possibility. At this point, it's all a lot of speculation for, like, how you want to interpret things. Um, so that's why, like, even in my lore video, I was like, it could be this, it could be that. Could be this, could be that. Okay, so. We're going to go ahead and head to the uh, Rotting Haven now 
for the Valley of Defilement. So, Archstone of the Dirty Colossus, I already read that. Um, but we're going to head to the Maiden Astraya, who we've heard so much about. Who, is she good? Is she bad? Is this some sort of mix? And as you guys in the comments have talked about, it seems to be some sort of, some sort of mix of purity and uh, evil and bad. So, um, what I might do is so I don't, can do this achievement properly. So the achievement for Maiden Astraya is that you don't you kill her without killing Garl Vinland. Um, and that's definitely can be more challenging to do unless you're ranged. But I prepared. I brought with me 140 arrows. I bought all those while I was off. So we can just use my compound bow to uh, knock her down. I think I have some heavy bows with me too, maybe. Or maybe I unequipped all those because they were so heavy. But um, that was how I prepared. Also, pay attention to the music for this, too. Oh, man, so many flies. I love the music. Hey, that body ain't dead. Go forth, Galvin. May you be unharmed. Okay. So we get some minor hints of the music until we go fight Garl Vinland, and then it becomes a little more epic. Uh, this is my favorite song in the game, both the remake and the original. Uh, I do like the original a little more, but something I read in the comments that made me like this version more of like the OST that was pointed out. Leave us, Slayer of Demons. This is a sanctuary for the lost and wretched. There is nothing here for you to pillage or plunder. Please, leave quietly. Okay, so something that I heard that was like an interesting was that, okay, the, the way the music's represented in the remake is it's more like Garl Vinland's Last Stand, where the time it starts to pick up is when you go to fight Garl Vinland, and that's when like the music really picks up, is when you go over to him. All of these uh, these plague guys, who I actually I don't know their in-game name, but all of these guys are worshipping, praying to Maiden Astraya, uh, as they all worship her, and this guy has a nail, actually. I didn't notice that before. I wonder why. What was that, what is that was supposed to represent? Huh. I don't know. Did I just never notice that was one of their weapons before? I guess that guy has a nail too. Maybe that was just their weapon I never noticed. Um, yeah, so anyways, you don't have to fight them. They're just they're just worshipping her. Uh, there are all, all those items down there. I'm not going to go down there, but what you see down there are a bunch of plague babies. And the reason I'm not going to go down there is just because I have a bunch of souls and I don't want to lose them all. But uh, basically, I, I believe those plague babies only spawn... If you are, if uh, Maiden Astraya is still alive, oh, you can see a whole shit ton of them right now. This is a really good shot, actually. I'm gonna get this shot in case I want to use it for a lore video. Uh, anyways, all those play babies leading to Maiden Astraya, uh, when she's dead, they stop spawning. And if you're in that goop, you will get plague almost immediately. And that's where actually I'm going to go ahead and equip the, uh, where is it? My Widow's Lotus. Uh, so yeah, that's that's going to be like an almost immediate status effect when you go down there. Uh, so it does, again, lead into question, because they're only being created, these Plague Babies, when she's alive. And all these guys come to her for purity. Um, she's trying to use her Demon Soul to purify everything. And even, like, if you talk to Selen, Selen Vinland, who maybe I should have talked to first. Uh, maybe I should just leave and go talk to Selen Vinland. I wonder if you can. That'd be interesting before I come talk to her, but, um, if you talk to Selen Vinland anyways, wait, wait, wasn't there an item over here? I think that's why I was coming over here. 
Uh, I guess not. But this is where, you, if you're going to want to shoot her as an archer, this is where you're going to want to be. To be close enough. So, anyway, Selen Vinland talks about how it's weirdly pure here despite all the plague, and that's what Maiden Astraea is trying to do. However, on this, at the same time, she essentially rejects her faith in what she thinks of God as for to heal all these things, creatures. So it's like both rejecting something which and becoming the ultimate demon, she willingly becomes a demon for the power to do this. But it's also she becomes demonic and a demon, so... Uh, and also, as I pointed out before, not exactly the smartest way she's doing things. You know, he's never been all the way down here for me before. He always waits for me at the top. Why are you all the way down here, Carl? <laughs> Did they finally actually make him more difficult? And they're like, when he stays at the top just chilling for you, he is so easy. So maybe they actually made him like a little more difficult. That's actually, that's a good patch. He was too easy before, honestly. I'm glad they patched him. Whoa, bro, 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 bro. I've never gotten his dialogue in the remake though. Where he like, he tells you, asks you to go back. Yeah, they brought him down here. That's good. That's a good change. Whoa, what's this? I've never seen him do that before. Is that Wrath of God? Interesting. Alright, Garl Vinlin. We're gonna fight on my terms. You're gonna kill me though. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I'll come back and redo this. I wanna just get a counter on him. I was gonna show how easy he was, but surprisingly, like... They changed him up. Uh, again, that's a good thing, though, I think. Like, he was so easy before. He would just do, like... He would stay in the same spot and just repeatedly do the same attack over and over again. That was extremely easy to parry. So, I think that's a really good change. I said I was worrying about my souls, but now I... Whatever. I'm gonna run back, and I want to talk to Sal and Vinland anyways before I do anything else. And get some law, Some sweet law, right? Some, right... Poisoned guy. It's all about the law. Give me that law. You, you give me the law. Yeah, I guess they all use that nail. I just never noticed. I thought it was a really short dagger or something. I wonder if that's the baby's nail, actually, now that I think about it. That makes sense. Because I think the baby's nail also poisons you, so. Um, yeah, that would make a lot of sense. I don't know why I never realized before. Uh, it was pointed out to me that uh, the the rotting corpse guy is weak to fire, and that gets rid of all the uh, the flies that are around you as well for the boss fight of the Dirty Colossus. And here you see all of these guys on spits being sacrificed. So uh, that's kind of like hints to you about the fire, essentially, being the boss's weakness. And maybe that's what they're doing with those corpses. Or it could be a religious thing, too. Uh, not that it's like a cross, but it, you know, it could be a religious thing that they're doing there. Yeah, I should have had my shield out for this spot. Oh, whoops. You know, it happens. It happens. It happens to be that I have a crap ton of grass, so I don't care. That's what happens. Alright, I'm just gonna run... Um, whatever. It's fine. You know, you thought I was over with this, but I'm not. I'm not over it. Oh, man. Yeah, those dash threes are so quick. <laughs> the fact that I already finished one of them just like that. And this dash three would already be over pretty much at this point if I decide to actually deal with it instead of going to talk to Selen Villain first and do my pure white tendency. But, okay, so anyways, I got Pure White Tendency after I beat the Dirty Colossus, and because of that, that's why Sen Selen Vinland is now going to appear. Uh, I also didn't put back on my Regenerator Ring, so maybe I'll do that right now. Uh, where's the Regenerator Ring? I know there's a bunch of bugs flying at me, so I'm trying to... I was trying to get it on. <laughs> get out! Now I get all of these. You know, I don't think this attack. I ever got hit by this attack once when I was recording footage for lore. And now it's like all the time. Alright. 
Uh, I just don't want to have to like deal with those bugs when I'm trying to sell them villain. I'm not sure how far their range is to come chase after me. All right, anyways, let's go sell in Vinland. I'm gonna want my Noble Lotus. All right, so here we see sell in Vinland. Uh, all, all worried about her bro, Carl. Why? You are one of the sane ones, are you not? Sure. I am Selen of the West. I seek my brother, Garl Vinland, the knight who accompanied St. Astria on her travels. I believe they settled here. If you happen to see my younger brother, please tell me. I must share with him the last words of our father. Yeah, I, I don't know if you get this dialogue or not after you beat Garl Vinland, but that's why I wanted to talk to her first, just in case. I heard an unflattering rumor about Saint Astria. It was that herb peddler. She believes that Astria is herself a demon. She has no reason to lie, but surely she must be mistaken. Yeah. Again, just talking about that rumor about Maiden Astria. I find something odd about Here this we go. place. It brims with grime, but at once feels strangely pure. So that is the interesting thing that, to me, more so if anything, shows that Maiden Astraya is doing what she's intending to and purifying or trying to. But then again, it's creating plague babies, her presence. So I don't know if it's really doing what she intends. I find something it brims with. Um, but like I don't know. Then again, she says it's oddly pure, Selen Vinland. So, um. Yeah, and also, like, by her, you find all, like, made in Astraya, you find all those dead churchgoers. Like, corpses after corpse after corpse. Do I have a archstone shard? I don't. Alright, I'm gonna fast forward this. See you guys in a moment. <laughs> Okay, we are back at the Rotting Haven again. Back for more action. So I'm going to see if I can trigger Garl Vinland's dialogue. And I also want to try to get a parry on him with his new aggro mode that I didn't get to fight. Which would have been a lot more fun than the way I did fight him. And I'll point out the way that I did fight him. But I'm just like, I'm weirded out by the fact that I can never get his audio. Um, and I also want that just in case I want to use it for like lore and all that. Because it's different than the original audio, so. Um, yeah, like I said, it's weird to me that... Oh, there. This is where he was for me. And he just hangs out here. He's like, don't pass, please. Oh my god, dude. Like, two of these will kill him. Okay, bro. Come on. Come on. Right, right. No. Nope. Say your will do not pass me thing. Give me that dialogue I want. Oh my god, okay. And then we're gonna try to go get some Maiden Astraya dialogue here. Uh, if you get passed, she'll say something. She says something different if you kill her. She says something different based on a multitude of things. Okay, so that's what she says. Please, just da 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 da. Yep, okay, I'll leave quietly. He's supposed to say something too, and I don't know why I can't get his dialogue to activate. But this leg's gonna kill me anyways. Uh, and yeah, so if you kill her without killing him, that'll be an achievement. Um, and he's pretty easy to parry when he's at that spot up there. Again, I don't understand why he doesn't do the first way, where he's a little more aggroed at the bottom. Because that's more fun, I think, is <laughs> he's, he's a more of a real fight. Um, and yeah, I really do want that dialogue from him. So I'm gonna try one more time to get that dialogue from him. Um, and you can see like that plate wiped me out even with the regenerator ring on. Uh, yeah, so. More faint stone from these guys right here. 
Okay, so maybe if I go here, this will cause him to not be there. Like, like he's trying to walk to that spot. What's he doing out back there? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, where are you going, bro? <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what tra triggers him to be more um, in a more interesting spot. Oh, yeah, I also have to switch back to my... My Widow's Lotus. Yeah, so I ha I don't think I've talked about the changes too much from my opinion because most of them I don't notice, but the one thing that I do notice from my end is I pay attention to the soundtrack and music a lot. And the music's a little low on my TV, so I haven't really heard it as well, honestly. But when I finally listened to OST, the OST, that was the one thing that was really disappointing to me, was that I thought the music wasn't nearly as good in the remake. It was like, it felt like to me they didn't understand a lot of what made some of the songs work and tick. Alright, come on, bro. Come on, bro. I just gotta try my parry. Wait, where's your weapon? There it is. Okay, I got my parry. I'm happy. I'm glad he was down here this time, though. Why aren't you asking me to leave, Garl Vinland? I've seen it on YouTube videos because I was trying to see if I missed something. I've seen other people get that from him, being like, leave, please. Um, he's also gonna say something different if you kill Maiden Astraya first. He'll just kind of like give up and chill. He's just like, no, <laughs> that's it. Uh, but I think that the best spot to try to kill her is probably up here. So I should probably kill her faithful followers just in case they come at me for shooting her, which I don't know if they do, but it's just kind of a safety precaution for myself. I know they just want to worship her. They just want to worship her. I get it. I know. I'm so evil. Yeah, pretty easy to find her, too, because that light. Yeah, this will take a little while. Good thing I equipped myself with a bunch of bows or arrows. Yeah, you could also run down and try to run past Garl Vinland. But, um... Why? I guess if you want more of a challenge... Trying to see if I can shoot him in the head. No. Okay. <laughs> this one to try. I wonder if she has less health and maybe he'll ask you to leave. I just, I really want that dialogue from him. Oh, she's healing herself. Okay. That makes it a little more challenging. I did not know she had that. Maybe I'll have to get some rotting arrows and come back or something. I've never tried to do this before. Because, I mean, Garl Vinland's not that difficult of a fight, so I've always just done him. Maybe I have to be just quicker with this so she can't heal herself. Whoops. This new, like, the new way the controller works honestly makes it more difficult for me to try to. It's really, like, I, I don't know if I really like the way the controller adjusts for, like, your arrows. Because, like, it was just, like, stopping me all of a sudden. It was, like, got so much harder to pull the trigger. Like, I, would feel, I feel like sometimes I'm hitting the bottom of the controller and it turns out I'm not. The dragon didn't heal itself, man, Astraya. There's also some interesting stuff to look at with her uh, items and all that. Because she has Plague, a Plague attack. But then all of her other stuff is healing. So it's also that like conflicting nature with her, I feel like. Just within her, so the spells themselves that you get from her. And I'm going to start looking at that stuff probably after I face the... Uh, go to the Shrine of Storms. We can start looking at that stuff, I think, this episode. Dear Lord. Who's saying that? Garl Vinland or Maiden Astraya? Dear Lord, you are too cruel. You have abandoned us. Is that not enough? Alright, I'm going to try going over to Garl Vinland and see what he says.
They're just watching me. Like, how dare you? That's that's a, a mama. I think you can kill her with arrows and it still counts towards the achievement. I don't think it really matters if um if you do it by like with your hand or what. Oh my god, okay. I'm gonna try to kill her by hand though. Just because I'm over here. Ah! <laughs> oh, now he gives up. Alright, he's all he's all sad now. Oh, now he's saying it. May you rot in the deepest depths of the swamp. Why must you pests insist on intruding upon our haven? You abandoned us long ago. What right do you have? We live humble lives. Leave us be. Alright. I'm trying to like figure out how to like stand here and not be plagued immediately. Like, God, it's like you fucking heal yourself from plague, and you're plagued again. And I don't want to die, because that's going to put me out of pure white. I was trying to get, like, sad, uh, sad him for my video, just in case. Oh, man, this sucks. <laughs> Let's see what happens if I go to photo mode. Maybe I won't be able to get sad him. Okay. I guess this is good enough. I wanted it to be in motion. But yeah, the plague babies, to my understanding, should stop spawning now. Alright, well, let's take care of Garl Vinland, too. Just because he's here. Although, I'm pretty sure he won't put up a fight at all. I think he's just gonna let you kill him because he's so sad. He's so sad. He killed this lady. Okay, I was wrong. Okay. Apparently he does still come after you. Holy shit, I might die. Oh no, no, no! Let Fuck! We shall defend our heart and home to the death. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There goes my pure white tent world tendency here. I don't think there's a way to get it back unless it, Yeah, I think I'm screwed at this point. You know what? There might be one way. I haven't lost it yet. If I leave, but then I need his white phantom to appear, and I think you have to leave for his phantom to appear. So I might be totally screwed. Hmm. This could be really bad. The only thing I'm going to miss is something from Selen Villain, but it's something I really wanted to get from her. Because I think you get her, uh, her miracle, which looks exactly like the old one. Uh, and that's like, for lore-wise, it's a really big item to get. So, okay. So I guess he's just auto dead. Oh crap. Oh crap. Uh okay. This could be really bad. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyways, let's try let's heal this plague. Um Ring of Sincere Prayer. Sanctuary of the Lost, am I getting... No, okay. Sanctuary of the Lost. Astraea was once the sixth saint. Our son made in Astraea the demon. Astraea was once the sixth saint, but now she lives beside those awaiting death in the Valley of Defilement. To ease the pain of the Valley's dwellers, Astraea chose to surrender to a demon soul over the cruel god she worshipped. Um... Yeah, so she basically did abandon her god for that. But this could screw me over right now. The fact that I'm warping might make it... Okay, yeah, I think I lost my tendency, but let's see. Yep, I lost it. It's gone. Um, crap. Okay, so... I don't know any way to get pure white again. I think that screws it up, the fact that I died as human and right there. Let's see if I at least got the achievement, though. Uh, okay. Let's look for the achievement first, see if I got that. Not fool, one shall stand. Vanquish, yeah. Vanquish made in Astraea without killing Garl Vinland. So, uh, the fact that I chose to attack him was the issue at the end. Um, I wanted to get his souls, man. And I wasn't sure how his armor would work. 
Okay, so if you are in pure white tendency, which I might be screwed out of getting at this point for world tendency, and that's why the world tendency matters. But I guess at least I got to show it. <laughs> Small miracles, man. Um, yeah, so if you don't have that pure white tendency, I'm going to get some of these items now. Um, a phantom of Garl Vinland will appear here, who you can defeat for an amulet. If you get that amulet, you want to give it to Selen Vinland, and then she'll give you an item for it. The item that she gives you is, uh, I think it's the, uh, I, I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure that what she's going to be giving you is specifically, I'm trying to decide where I want to fall, drop, uh, the one that really reveals that the god that they've been worshipping is the old one. Uh, I had just you guys point out the comments that it's complicated because there is a god who created the old one and all that. So the whole like god thing is a little more complicated in this game because that's sort of what the intro says, in a sense. And that's like that's true. There could be another god, but the point is that the one that the church is worshiping is really pointed out to be the old one. And uh, I I don't think that's debatable by the charm that you find and all the depictions of their their god so at least to me i i'm pretty positive that that's the case and that you can't really argue against that specific aspect of it uh okay anyways this failed boss rush mode man i'm so mad at myself uh that's like a hundred percent my fault but say la vie man uh so i believe no more oh wait the play babies are still coming huh I thought they stopped coming if once she dies, but I guess I was mistaken. Well, that's actually really not good because uh, I have 30, 40,000 souls on me. Yeah, and these guys are going to like, these guys murder you real fast. So, oh my god. Yeah, they're going to trap me in and murder me. I'm trying to at least get far enough away that maybe I can pick it up, pick up my souls by coming the other way. Um, I'm just going to try to get my souls back. I don't think anything's really worthwhile down there. But yeah, I guess that's good. I went down there and found out that the Plague Babies are still alive. So I'll give it that. I just thought I read somewhere that they disappear or like in a comment or something after she dies. But that would seem not to be the case. Either way... I have to assume that the reason the Plague Babies are being created has to do with her. Uh, although I could be mistaken in that assumption, but I think that would make sense. Anyways, let's see. What's going to be the best way to get that? Maybe if I drop down on that one up there, that might be if I can do that. I was just trying to get my 40,000 souls. It's not the biggest deal. I'm basically done with the game at this point, but uh, I want them, man. I want them. Man, maybe this try it turned into like way more of a hassle than I thought it'd be. I thought this would be like a really easy segment to do. I mean, it's my own fault, but I definitely wasn't expecting this. All right, where are those souls at? Okay, well, but they, hey, 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 don't roll, don't roll. Oh, no, 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 come on, come on, come, no! I might just fast forward now, honestly. No, no! <laughs> Let me free!
that was fun getting those souls back. Definitely a journey. All right, let's do seek, seek, seek. Uh, I'll do two more endurance and see if that gets what I've been hoping for. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm realizing because I've had this bow equipped. Yeah, one more without the bow equipped, actually, and that'll make it so I can um, do do my thing. Actually, is there a magic resistance ring? Because that might... Lowers magic power, raises magic defense. That might actually help with this area, now that I think about it. Okay. Let's head to the Shrine of Storms. Continue the boss rush. Continue the boss rush. Altar of Storms. And let's go to 4-3. So we did 3-3, 5-3, now 4-3. Okay. So this is an interesting boss in the sense of um, you have to get a sword to beat it, basically. So it's like another gimmick boss, in a sense. Uh, and until you get that sword... I, I, I don't know. I don't know if you have magic, if you can take care of it with, like, if you're just a super powerful sorcerer. But especially for my build, you basically just have to have that sword. But here we have the King Manta Ray. So I guess this is, like, exactly who they would have been worshipping. Those bar those barbarians back in the day. Again, I'm not so sure about the pile of dead ones. That's still something I'm wondering about. But uh, the thing that I just do here, it might be a suicide run, but I just go in for uh, my focus is purely going to be getting that sword. And once I have that sword, I can go ahead and try to take care of these mana rays. Or are they stingrays? I don't know if they have stingers. So maybe they're really more akin to stingrays. Now, if you ever come back here after defeating the boss, these guys do respawn, just as a note. Let's see what you give us. I think I can run and grab it. Moon Shade Stone Chunk. Cool. All right, here we go. We get our Storm Ruler. Oh yeah, okay. And let's see, what's next? What's next? I'm just trying to get more of these things. Storied Hero Soul. Again, you can just come do this after you defeat the boss, because at that point, all these guys... You'll probably have killed all these guys. But, uh, it's okay. I'm going to try and do it right here. Hey! Ephemeral Eyes. Very nice. Yeah, Daddy One doesn't come until, or Mama, Mama One, which however you want to look at, it, doesn't come until you defeat more of these, a bunch of these guys. Some holy arrows, okay. Sure, I'll take that. Yeah, okay, okay. I'll leave you guys alone for now, for now. All right, let's go ahead and equip our Storm Ruler. Still got underneath. That's good. And, yeah, maybe the fact that I equipped that magical dullness ring, that might have helped out here. Okay, so... Wait a second, is that... Is that the dad one? Why is it so close? Whatever. Uh, yeah, so this is this is gonna be what our Storm Ruler is gonna do for us. And, oh, apparently, I thought you had to be two-handed R2 to do it, but apparently you can do it with one-handed R2. I just thought I'd test it out right there. 252 if I do two hand. What about one hand? 219. So it actually is better to do two hand for the sake of damage. Actually, let me equip late moon grass. But it might take more stamina, so let's find out. Yeah, it takes more stamina to do uh I, I still get hurt for quite a bit though, if I like or potentially from these guys. Even though I equipped that ring. Actually, I'm not sure what type of attack this is that I'm doing. And what type of damage that would be that I'm doing to these guys. So I don't know if that ring that I've equipped is actually making these myself hurt these guys for less. Oh yeah, and they equip, they drop Cloudstone. So I guess that's why it's a good thing that they will respawn is because you can farm for Cloudstone with these guys. Okay, uh-oh, I'm gonna get hit. I'm about to get slammed. Slam! Alright. 
now we should have uh, a pissed off mom. How dare you kill all my babies? She say she saith. And then hits us with quite a lot. Okay. Uh, after her initial attack, though, she's gonna just kind of run through. So you know, like you saw, see that I'm pretty low on health, and it would be smart to heal, but I don't have to yet. I can wait until she does her run back to heal and get as many hits on her as I can, which actually ended up being a huge amount of hits. That was nice. All right, might kill her in the next uh, one of her runs. Actually, uh, I like to just move and run towards her when she does her thing. And sometimes that can, well, for me, that has in the past helped me avoid it. Clearly not that time. Okay, one more strike, and she is a gunner. Okay, apparently not. Apparently not. Okay. I couldn't get that strike off on her. Well, hopefully I don't get totally screwed. <laughs> hopefully I don't get, like, one more attack. I could try to heal you. I mean, heal. I could try to, like, use this thing to block some attacks and see if that helps. Maybe it will. I've never really tried before. Yeah, it seems like it did. Alright, well, there you go. Use the environment to your advantage. Goodbye, Storm King. Oh, Storm King. I was calling it a her when the name is literally Storm King, so I guess it'd be he. Just the fact that he had all the, the baby ones on him, you know? I like the effect on the Storm Ruler, which is only in this area. So this attack that I was doing with the Storm Ruler, you can only do in this area. You cannot do it if you're in any other area. Oh, the Archstone is all the way up here? For some reason, I thought it was higher up. Some pure Cloudstone for doing that. Uh, let's read the Storm Ruler description now. A legendary large sword with a barbed blade named for one who quells or controls storms. It is said that this ancestral, or that the ancestral shadow men rent the very storm clouds from the sky with its might. Abandoned for an age, the sword is badly deteriorated, but what remains of this once mighty weapon is still enough to send flows flying. If wielded in the forest of Monolis, where we are right now, resting place of the ancestral spirits, its power to rend the sky might just be awoken, or reawoken. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and drop that off now into storage. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. Archstone of the Storm King Demon. Perhaps this demon, a flying beast resembling a gigantic stingray. Oh, I was calling it a manta ray. Stingray would be correct, I guess. Is a manifestation of the thoughts and feelings of the shadow men who worshipped it centuries ago. So that goes into what some of you guys have been saying, where the idea with demon souls is that the demons almost, in some locations, take over and become the legends of the people which could be what's going on with the adjudicator demon of this area and all that like mayhaps it's just simply their legends of the culture that it, these demons are manifesting and turning into or becoming manifestations of as opposed to that creature actually existing pre the demons uh and that that archstone right there would indicate that that's what the case is so I'm just checking to see if there's any items I missed over here. I honestly don't care too much about the Plague Baby items, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I mean, I can roll and go get them as soon as I drop off my souls and use them. It won't really matter and just do some suicide runs to get those items, but... I don't remember them being anything, like, super useful. But if you guys are going to go crazy about it and you really want me to get them, let me know. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the Nexus. Um, being that I'm human... I could sacrifice my life somewhere to start bringing it to Pure Black Tendency. Instead of, uh... Like, I could, like, go die at uh, somewhere I've already finished all the Pure White stuff. Like, maybe the uh, at Boletaria, for example. Or in Latria, or Latria. i finished all the Pure White stuff there as well. Alright, so I'll do one more... In I'm in two more Endurance again. I don't know. I want to be able to equip what I want to equip. <laughs> like, maybe strength. Well, only one more strength is going to get me uh, more power, but it's okay. Let's see. Equip burden to 64. Let's see if that lets me equip my bow and arrow as well at the same time and be able to roll. 
with uh, my gloves. Nope. Okay, I need one more level, I think, to be able to roll with the gloves and the bow and arrow all at once. Okay. I'm going to have to buy a whole bunch of arrows. Maybe I should just do that right now, though, actually, before I die. Because uh, that will help me out with uh, the blue dragon in the next area that we're going to go to. So, let's just repair our equipment first. And... Get me those arrows. Oh, I see. I'm too heavy to buy more. Okay, so let's go ahead and send to storage. Send all this to storage. And then we'll start looking at some of those descriptions, I think. After I commit Sudoku. Alright, heavy arrows. Let's send those away. Let's send all this stuff away. I'm just going to buy the rest up in arrows. Uh, yeah, and... I never use these. I'm going to pull both of those away for now. Buy just a crap ton of arrows. Haha, <laughs> 450! Perfect. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and send... Oh, I probably won't need that many, but that's okay. I'm glad. Alright, let's go ahead and send... How about like 200-something of those arrows off? I'll come grab more when I actually go to the area next episode, so I can kill the blue dragon. But uh, okay, so first things first, uh, we need to bring some of this world tendency down. So as you can see, I screwed up with the Valley of the Final Mint. I can at least get my character tendency to white though, um, so I'm gonna do that. But let's go to whatever Ivory Tower. It doesn't really matter. Just somewhere I can like roll off real quick. <laughs> get that death, go back, and let's look at some items. Let's look at some descriptions, get some lores. Ah, no! Pure white, I miss you! That's in my head going over, making sure that I did that, all the pure white stuff, but pretty damn positive. Oh, shit. Oh, man, I didn't. I guess I can't anyways. I, I was thinking for the reverse stuff, for getting that item, for getting the penetrator. But I might have already screwed up since I lost pure white at the uh, Valley of Defilement anyways. So I, maybe I couldn't have gotten all those uh, coins. So. I am sorry, guys. I'm really sorry. I just didn't think about it until just now. Oh, man. Okay. Well, what's done is done. Let's go talk to... Let's go talk to Yuria. And obviously I'm missing uh, the False King's soul here but that's okay let's uh learn magic relief is with the pure blood demon so magic derived from the soul of maiden astraya become demon and fully recover a can companion by touching them astraya is the most corrupted of all demon kind but her essence parallels the most divine of beings uh which tells you that i guess the demons don't have to be evil i guess is the idea uh okay curse what does she have another one here I guess her other ones from. Um, you have to beat the game twice if you want all the, all of the magic achievement. I think, and the other one's gonna be from. What's his name? Sage Frake. I mean, she also has one from Saint um, Saint Urbane, but cursed weapon is going to come from the Penetrator Demon. Uh, symbolizes the mighty sword wielded by the Penetrator that has slain countless warriors who bravely faced the demon. Not much there. The Old Monk. So we go back to Latria. The spell heightens one's thirst for souls, enabling their caster to drain victims of every last soul within them. Simply demonic behavior when all is said and done. Um, so you get more souls for killing an enemy with it. Uh, so I guess that tells you that like when, it, when something dies, what the Old Monk was doing with trying to torture them, and his area was really drain them of all their souls to like like absolutely obliterate all the souls and get every last one probably for all the demons he was creating and also for the thirst of um his golden robes but that's interesting that you even still have some souls after you die that don't quite leave ignite is from the armor spider demon just an extremely primitive fire spell so not not much there Firestorm is from the Dragon God. Channels the raw power of the great Dragon God, deliverer of chaos whose devastating flames will never be tamed. Yeah, nothing super interesting in his. Alright. Oh, whoops. 
I'm going to bother Master Frakes. Shut up. <laughs> you have your wit. As you know, the scourge of Boletaria has activated all souls and energized all magic. Perhaps then we should work to preserve this state of heightened reality. Oh no, no, heaven forbid. The demons steal souls and with them our sanity. Such blasphemy must not be permitted. Right, so since I defeated more Arch Demons, they have more to say too. Um, but basically, the, his talk right there about the heightened reality is what made it seem like, to me, part of what made it seem like that you could still, that they kind of discovered the Solaris before the demons came back, but when the old one was reawakened because of their meddling with Solaris, essentially, in part, and King Alant, um, and all that was reawakened, it just heightened and made magic even more powerful, and that's also what brought miracles to the world. All right, uh, learn magic. So, a bunch of these aren't going to do anything that I want to read. Poison Cloud. Magic derived from the soul of the Leechmonger Demon creates a poisonous cloud. Okay. Uh, fireballs from the Dragon Demon, uh, from the Dragon God. The Dragon God was a demon born of dragon bones submerged in lava and naturally embodied the power of the greatest towering flames. So once again, the question becomes a timeline thing of was the dragon god the demon who was created in the first scourge or the second scourge um but he was a demon born of dragon bones so i almost wonder if maybe the first scourge was where the dragon bones came from and then the second scourge is when the dragon god got uh, created i don't know i gotta look into it more soul ray is from the fool's idol the idol was a perfect likeness of the late queen of latria the spell offers a small glimpse into the power of this accomplished ma magician so it tells you that the Queen of Latria knew spells, she knew how to do magic. Uh, again, the whole line of Yormadar learned it, it became really important to Latria. And the fact that the idol was a perfect likeness of the late Queen Latria led, leads me to wonder if perhaps it is the Queen of Latria's dead body that has a demon soul pumped into it by the old monk and is revived again and again and again um, by him over and over and over again to like put the people where he wants them to be and try to for his whole like twisted worshiping thing that he's doing a ritual golden uh from the old monk demon fires a soul arrow that tracks his target the old usurper was merely a medium for the golden robe oh and this is what that that bot guy was about to do if you fight the old monk phantom the black font phantom who appears they use this the homing soul arrow i just killed him too fast the old usurper was merely a medium for the golden robe that drove him to madness. This spell reflects the old man's covetousness of power that was never meant for him. Uh, so again, showing that the golden robe was the actual demon, really. Uh, light weapon is from the silver, uh, from the penetrator demon. Symbolizes the penetrator's mighty sword. <laughs> Not really much, you know, penetrator. Uh, at least from these. Uh, although we know that the penetrator is one of the great knights of Latch or uh, from Boletaria. But we'll talk about that in the next episode more when we go meet the phantoms. Death Cloud. Here's the one. Magic derived from the soul made in Astraya. Become demon. Uh, so she became a demon again. This I think these sorts of descriptions are just more factual as opposed to people's opinions are opinions when you talk to people in the game. Creates a deadly cloud of plague. Astraya, who is who willingly accepted the corrupted and corroded naturally became the most corrupted of them all. So it's interesting that she both represents purity, but also corruption. Um, and again, the plague babies that are born all around her would seem to represent that more, even more. Um, that's not necessarily good, even though her intentions are pure. And what she's trying to do is pure. I don't think what she's doing is necessarily good. All right, uh, fire spray. From the Armor Spider Demon. Can be fired in quick succession while moving. Nothing there. Acid Cloud. Dirty Colossus Demon. Creates a cloud of acid which corrodes equipped to armor and weapons. Uh, I guess that's one of his weapon things that he can do that I forgot about and didn't notice. Is He probably can cause corrosion to your stuff. To your equipment. But uh, not really giving us much about the Dirty Colossus or the Leechmonger so far from this stuff. Warding. Magic derived from the soul of the Tower Knight Demon. Great really greatly reduces magic uh, damage taken. 
The spell mirrors the stalwart defense provided by the great shield held by the Tower Knight. Not too much there. So, let's go ahead and talk to St. Urbane, who I think is going to have some more to say to us. Also, if I talk to the Monumental, they'll have more to say, or help have more to say, but I'm going to wait to talk to the Monumental until next episode, I think. Oh, is that you? Do you have further off? Oh, Freak and the Candle Maiden are no exception. All right, guess not. He doesn't really have anything else. Learn Miracle. Okay, so. Uh, the Dragon God Soul. It's a miracle this time. One of the greatest of all miracles, it symbolizes the power of God in opposition to the forces of evil and is an offer of aid to all who are moral and righteous. Uh, so that is the Dragon God Demon. I was talking about how, just a moment ago, how everything I think is accurate here. Uh, but it symbolizes the power of God. It's interesting that this comes from the Dragon God to me. Um, with this explosive field. Hmm. That was a little more interesting. I'll have to think more about this one. Anti-magic field. Here we go. Miracle derived from the soul of the Storm King. Uh, one of the greatest of all miracles. It symbolizes the power of God in opposition to the forces of evil. Oh, that, that's what it says for all this crap. Okay. Creates a field around the caster which nullifies magic. It doesn't say anything interesting for both of those. All right, so miracle derived from the soul of old hero demon prevents the caster's death one time. The miracle is a symbolic denunciation, the heretical tradition that worships death and the dead. This miracle is a symbolic denunciation. It should be of the heretical tradition that worships death and the dead. Uh, that could honestly be part of why Saint Urbane went to um, went down to that island. Maybe because people were heretical there and he's trying to convert everything or purify it. Could also be what some of you suggested that he's just pilfering and pillaging just like uh, just like everyone else. You know, who's there, like Grave Robert Blige, just like Patches. Especially considering that we find him knocked down in the area where Patches was suggesting everyone go to get treasure. So clearly St. Urbane fell for Patch's exact trap, and that's what happened, is they fell for Patch's trap, and they wanted to get that treasure off of the corpses. So maybe they're not so good. Uh, regeneration. This miracle is a symbolic denunciation of the heretical human-devouring adjudicator. This is from the adjudicator demon. Um, again, denoun denouncing religions that aren't their own, essentially, is what both of these are. Resurrection. Miracle derived from the soul of Maiden Astraea, become demon. Returns nearby phantoms to their respective worlds, restoring their bodies in the process. This miracle symbolizes the denunciation of Maiden Astraea, former sixteenth after her corruption. Another super positive thing, though, is restoring, uh, restoring a phantom to their body, right? I mean, that's, like, so good. That's such a good thing. Uh, okay. Also, if you're doing co-op and all that, this can be really helpful. Miracle derived from the soul of the Leechmonger Demon. It cures the caster of all status ailments. This miracle is anathema <laughs> to the miasma and disease that gurgle at the defiled base of the valley. Yeah, it's definitely the worst at the bottom, but again, that's where all the gunk of death and goop and crap go. Uh, banish. It's also interesting to me. That Maiden Astraea is supposed to be purifying everything, right? And we saw that she no one took care of all the bodies that are poisoning the water well. And then she's there to purify everything and make everything better. Yes, she's in the most corrupted of all places where the plague is there, creating plague babies. All these people are worshipping her for what she's trying to do. But then there's dead knights everywhere around her. They're offering her souls, which is what demons want, because she's trying to purify everything. And yet, that's the one area where the plague really is. So it's almost like, again, the idea that she's not really doing any good there. Despite what she's trying to do. To me, to my mind. If you guys disagree, please. Like, I, I love to hear different theories around it. Miracle derived from the Leechmonger Demon. Uh, the Miracle... Oh yeah, we just read that. Banish. Miracle derived from the soul of Old Monk. This miracle is a symbolic denunciation of a mad old man who summon black phantoms only to enslave them, which we basically saw exactly that. 
And that's everything there. I see. I certainly cannot. You must remember. Uh, I don't think he has anything new. Oh, thank yeah, nothing new from you. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this episode. I apologize for the pure white screw-up, especially just the fact that I screwed up with uh, selling villain, all that stuff. That that sucks a lot. That really sucks a lot because I wanted to get that item. But um, anyways, thanks so much for joining. I will see you guys next time uh, for 1-4 perhaps, maybe some pure white stuff, some pure black stuff. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I guess I'll do the probably 1-4 first, go face Old King Duran, and then all that will bring me down to pure black real quick. But uh, regardless, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for joining me, and later, guys. Um, Basa. Peace.